He's Hi. here. Okay. Hey, what's up, Asman? How you doing, man? What's I'm up, McConnell? Doing great, man. How about you? Good, good. So you think um, that it's bad? I do, I do, okay. actually. Wow. And uh, I'm actually involved in this particular issue. So uh, I guess I'll... Can, can you, can you guess, say how? Yeah, so, um, so, so the reason why I think this is bad is... Uh, especially companies like Red Bull. And like, I, I agree with you in the sense that Method is a corporation and they're trying to secure their portion of the market share and they definitely don't want to be forced out. Um, so, you know, end game, things might be a little different. But the problem with bringing a third party entity like Red Bull is, number one, when you have a company like this that's this massive and this endemic to this scene, what usually happens is companies like this try to push for exclusivity rights to run community tournaments. And that is definitely the end game with Red Bull. Um, the reason why I know this is that Red Bull contacted me about classic events and stuff like that after the previous tournament. And it's great. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know what I want to disclose and what I don't want to disclose about that. But the bottom line is it seems pretty apparent, at least from my perspective, that the goal is to partner up with Red Bull and Blizzard to create exclusive events, which means that all other community organizers and stuff like that would effectively be forced out, which is not good for anybody. Um, so they're trying to create opinion. a monopoly. I, I believe so, yes. Now, again, this is alleged and stuff like that, but but I think that's what's happening. And, you know, and, and ultimately, monopolies obviously mean diminished quality. And I'll give you an example of how it means diminished quality. Every um, ISP. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Specific, specific to this event, uh, Red Bull contacted me to come out to this, to their world first event. And I haven't played BFA since August of last year. I have no idea what's going on in the rating scene. I've casted a couple of events in the classic scene, but by no means am I even remotely qualified to have any kind of like, like I can't host a world first race, dude. I don't right. know how to play the game, you know? Yeah. So it's like, uh, and, and I told them that I said, are, like, are, are you sure? Like, like, am I really, you know, I, I told them, I'm like, look, I haven't played the game in like a year. I mean, I can come out and do it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, everything's going to be fine. And, um, and, and I was just completely shocked. And the amount of money they were throwing at me to, to come out to this event was absurd. And, uh, and and ultimately, that's I think that's what it comes down to. And that's all private, are... right? I mean, I'm just assuming that's all private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I I, I want I don't know what to disclose. I won't push not you. To disclose. I don't, I don't think sure. no, no one with any sense would. Yeah, yeah thank you, man. Um, but at the end of the day, again, this is part of the diminished quality. These corporations are reaching out to people who you know, admittedly don't know very much about, you know, this particular game. And this happens across a lot of other scenes because they just don't know what's going on. Whereas Method and let's say this commission that they set up um, and full disclosure, I just literally just signed with Method. I was going to announce that like later on stream or whatever, but I figure it's probably what are you better announcing to put it right that out now? there. I guess it's just, it's just to be, you know, <laughs> transparent, dude. Oh, wow. <laughs> trans I well, congratulations, man. Congratulations. That's great. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Congrats. But, but um, no, thank you, man. Uh, like part of it was was kind of hearing them out and their vision for like community based tournaments and stuff like that. But that's a whole yeah. other discussion. But um, but basically, like, you know, you bring in these these third party guys like Red Bull or these large conglomerates, they push for exclusivity rights, they take over the scene and then the scene completely dies out because Obviously, number one, you have no parity, you have no diversity in events. Number two, you have a tremendous amount of censorship. Like, your tournament the other day was amazing. It was hilarious. Thank you, man. 50%, maybe more, of what was said and done during that tournament would not happen. So everything I a... said, basically. Yeah. <laughs> basically, it would not be allowed if, uh, if like, a major corporation like that took over. That's See? True. Told you. And so, like, um, so, like, with Method, they're setting up this commission. I don't know the details or anything. I haven't spoken to them about this specific thing. Um, but from from what it sounds like, at least there's representation. And I'm sure these guilds will hire lawyers for themselves to kind of make sure this collective bargaining agreement at least is in their favor. They're allowed to exit whenever they want to. So there will always be some kind of diversity. If the guilds don't like it, hopefully they can pick up and leave, host their own event. That's fine. It's great for the community to host as many of its events as it wants to. But once you bring in the giants, the big boys that can just force everyone out with one paycheck, that's when things become problematic. I think that's head. probably your strongest argument, right? Is an argument for uh, like basically the longevity of this. And it's like anybody who wants to do uh, an event. Let's see, are we, are we having lag here? Uh, let me make sure. Uh, sorry guys, I, I think we might've been getting DDoS by Red Bull. Actually, I can't say that. We are not getting DDoS by Red Bull, it was a joke. Um, 
But, uh, yeah, no, anyway, like, the point that I'm making, right, is that uh, I think this is a matter of self-preservation. And I think that the self-preservation argument that you're making is probably the strongest one uh, in my mind, right? Is that even if Method might have ulterior motives, the idea is that siding with someone that doesn't necessarily edge you out later on in the future, right? With, like, you know, like, potentially, like, exclusivity, etc., that could be really bad. And I think that would also be bad for the community in general. Because generally what happens, I, I feel like with Monopolies, like what also happens with Monopolies is they get lazy. Mm -hmm. So whenever you have the Monopoly on basically the tournament rights for a game, it doesn't matter if your tournament's very good or not. Because if exactly. people are going to want to watch a tournament, they have to watch you. Uh, that's it. Get Scripe in a call. Who uh, is Scripe with Method? Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'm familiar with the name. I just don't know what the affiliation is. Yeah. And, and, I, and I just want to be clear here? real quick. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I, yeah, I was just wanted to say, like, again, this is not like Red Bull. If you look at, you know, th their perspective, they're not doing anything, quote unquote, wrong. Um, it's, it's the correct business move. They participated in an event. They saw how You're tremendous right. it could be. Yeah, they have the capital to put on their own event. Like, honestly, if I was the head of Red Bull, I would probably do the exact same thing. But in terms of just like the community, just like us, gamers, players, WoW players, stuff like that, ultimately the viewing experience will be worse if you give such a large entity so much power in the scene over the smaller community-based tournaments. And I'm not going to lie, I've got a vested interest in this. I hosted a couple of tournaments. Asmund, you're hosting tournaments. Rich wants to start a league. We want to start a league. Us. Thank you, by the way. And I wish you good luck for tomorrow. So the first one was great. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And the freaking amazing tournament you guys put on the production was insane but you know you know personally for for us for example um what if let's say red bull or anybody else i don't want to just vilify red bull what if anybody comes in and says you know to blizzard okay we want to start hosting events here's a contract you know we'll host all your events we'll pay you this amount of money for a community license and we'll have exclusivity rights all of a sudden you me rich at uh, s van stay safe none of us can ho host events anymore yeah exactly yeah. that's what i'm really kind of yeah. worried about is like as i said self-preservation like even like yeah. i i do think that method is trying to position themselves to have like not necessarily like executive control but primary control over the way that the race to world first is being handled and whether that's something that's earned or not isn't really something i want to get into too much but the point is that obviously i do think this is self-serving for method as well because this is something to keep in mind. Like Method is doing this because this is what will help them the most, right? In the short run and also I believe in the long run. The long run argument I do think is more, um, what's the word for it? Uh, uh, it? It's more altruistic. Yeah, absolutely. I agree 100%. Yeah. But uh, yeah, sorry, I just wanted to put my two cents in real quick. Um, thanks for, for bringing me on and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't wanna, of like, course. Bother you. Yeah, and congratulations on uh, on the partnership, man. Uh, that's fucking amazing. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Thank absolutely. you, dude. Yeah, so... Good luck to... Go ahead. I was going to say good luck to, to you guys and everything you do and stuff like that. Yeah, for yeah. sure, man. Good luck tomorrow, too. Thanks, man. All right, All right see, see you guys later. See you later. See you, dude. Peace. So... I might actually have something really juicy... What? Something really, really juicy. What, dude? Holy shit, I'm excited. Uh, it depends what? on if we can talk to the people from this organization or not. Huh? Um... What do you mean? Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out, okay, guys? Be very... Yeah, uh, okay, so we can get Scripe in here and have him explain, if you want to do that. Yeah, that's fine with me. Hey, good morning. Uh, let, let's see. Uh, so I'm gonna go. No, it, it's not about that. I'm trying to see. Okay. Um. It's Wendy's. You didn't get Wendy's, did you? Uh. No, it, it has to do actually with uh. Can you just one service? second? I, I'm trying to figure this out. Okay. All right. So, are there any people in Limit who would be able to, like, give a, 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 a their own perspective? Because, obviously, we've talked to somebody, you know, S-Fund, or sorry, not S-Fund, uh, 
uh, tips technically representing method in a way, right? Or at least part of method. And uh, yeah, if, if there's somebody in, in Limit, uh, we can maybe talk to them. Limit Max, I, I, I like Maximum a lot. I think he's very competent. And uh, I, I, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, THD or whatever. I mean, Masks is on vacation. Yeah, I would be too. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, is Ironic on if you can? Uh, I, I'd love to, but we just need to figure out who it is, okay? I do apologize for the, uh, you know, the, the setup here, guys, but we're just trying to make sure that we get the right answers and we, we get the right information. That'd be great, because bringing tips, on, tips out on is a biased perspective. Yeah, I mean, obviously it is, but being having, having bias, preheated streaming right now, Officer Limit, I, I don't know really if he'd be wanting to talk then, right? Uh, talk to Joe. I don't know about that. Scribe. Yeah, no, we can talk to Scribe too. Uh, I, I'd, I'd have no problem talking to him. Like if he wants to come into uh, to chat, uh, that'd be amazing. Uh, get the web page off. Well, I want to go ahead and show this a little bit more, right? And like just have this up so people know actually what, what, what we're discussing. I think that's kind of what like what makes sense, at least in my mind. Uh, things are going on. Who am I bringing in? Scribe. Uh, Scribe. Uh, watch the illegal memes playlist on YouTube. I don't know about that. Talk to Josh. Guys, we're not talking to Josh, man. Like, you guys want to talk to Josh? You're going to be talking to me on YouTube. Okay, you don't want to do that. So where's the juicy bit? How do I get in? Um, you, you can... Uh, McConnell, can you yeah. set... Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, yeah, McConnell will set it up. Okay, uh, look. Who's this bald dude? Yeah. Okay. Have fun. Zip. Oh, you got your hat. All right, good. Uh, do you get everything else? Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, I didn't know what you were going to leave it here or not. Okay, you got your phone, you got everything else. All right, have fun. See ya. Bye. She says bye. They put hearts in chat. Really, they did. I didn't even tell them to do it. All right, see ya. Okay, uh, get Matthew from person. Well, yeah, I don't know about that, man. Okay, let's see. Uh, bye. Yeah, all right. Uh, is your... Okay, dude. Uh, okay, dude. Uh, just give me one second. Uh, pause music, please. Yeah, we're trying to set everything up, okay? As soon as Scribe gets in here, we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get his perspective on it. But I would really like to get a, um... Shut the fuck up, that's fine. Um... We would really like to get, obviously, the perspective of somebody from uh, from Limit in here, too. Because, obviously, like, them and Pete... I don't know I mean, anybody... I messaged him. Say what? I messaged him. Uh, Scribe? Yeah. Uh, on Twitch? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Scribe, you can respond to your Twitch DMs. Uh, that'd be ideal. Actually, you know what? While we... While we wait for this, because people are... I don't know what happened, guys, but, like, nobody's trading me any fucking money. This is bullshit. So I'm just gonna go over and invite me over and see. Let's see if we can get a rust feather kill or two, and uh, we'll get that done. Shut the fuck up, Coran, fucking idiot. Okay, give me one second. Can't see. No, it, it's fine. I mean, like I'm gonna be AFK for the most of this. Uh, so just give me one second. We're trying to make sure that we get a fair and balanced perspective here, and, and we get uh, we get everybody in here that should be in here. Uh, that's the point. Okay, let's go. War stream, idiot. This is the war of the actual game. Like, this is the war of the people in the game, right? Uh, I, I think this is important, too. Like, obviously, if something comes up, I do that. Uh, I'm not saying that we're All not... Right. Okay. Here you go. Have a good talk. All right. Hello? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, dude. So, um... What's up? Uh, not much. Uh, so there's a lot of shit going on, huh? Yeah, I didn't actually expect it when I opened your stream. I just wanted to look what you're doing, and then suddenly you're talking about method. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, obviously, yeah. Sco put out the announcement, and uh, you know, some other people in method kind of echoed the sentiments and everything. One thing that I want to ask right now: like, why the fuck did you guys go with Red Bull if they didn't pay you any money in old year? Honestly, like me personally, yeah, I'm doing the rate leading and everything. Yeah. I'm managing the guild, but uh, company-wise. I don't really get to see much. I don't even know what I would be able to say from the things that I do know. Okay. Because, like, you know, there's uh, privacy stuff and shit like that. Of course. Uh, you, Sko was saying you could uh, get him in if you want. Okay. And he can explain his point of view. Like, I, I, like he had to even, like, talk to lawyers and stuff to make that tweet post, you know? Really? Yeah. 
it's it's not that simple. So, like, I, I'm scared what to say. Like, I could, I might say something and then I don't well, know. It's not it's not good. Um, wait, I can I can link him to Discord, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Why not? I wonder what he will say here as well. Yeah, I'll be curious. Uh, I mean, why the fuck not? Let's do it. Yeah, dude. Hmm. Man, I was laying in bed. Yeah? You guys made me uh, get to my PC. I'm surprised I you didn't were laying in bed. I thought you had to farm AP. Yeah. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> How dare I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, slacking off and it's a raid leader? Oh, man. Dude, I was even outside today for like two yeah. hours, yeah? Whoa. Saw the sun since like one and a half weeks. Man, you guys are going casual after COS? Dude, that sucks. Yeah, it was... Yeah? <laughs> well, look, man, I, I, I actually... Like, the way that I look at this is that it really... It, it seems disappointing, at least from my perspective, right? And we'll talk about this whenever Sko gets in here. But um, my perspective is that it's really disappointing that this happened, period. Right? Because it seems to me like the main the main contention here is having the event on Red Bull's, on Red Bull's channel. Right outside of that, I think that people, you know, this is absolutely something could that could be. Oh, oh, okay. Um, um, uh, can you, uh, invites? Okay, I, I told Sko to message you, uh, McConnell. Okay. Uh, but yeah, he did just message me. And so, yeah, they're going to be able to come on and, and talk about the event. Yeah, he's going to be coming. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we got raid in two weeks. Raid in two days, actually. Uh, we're getting very far in war. Well, no, I mean, like, obviously there's a lot to do, okay? Yeah, so I, I just talked to him, and we're gonna see if we can sort this out, okay? Um, one second, let me go ahead and double check. Okay. Sorry, I was reading something. Okay, we're good. Uh, you're the manager from Asmongold? Yes, I I'm the manager of Asmongold. Method Joe? I don't know about that, dude. Uh, but he here's the thing, right? Is that the whole idea... Can By the way, can somebody invite me to a, uh, a group to where I can kill Rust Feather? Because uh, I'm trying to get this mount, man. And uh, it's not really going too well right now. Uh, play some classic. Oh, you want me to go AFK and Ironforge over there instead of Ironforge over here? It's about the same thing. Uh, we're gonna stream I'm your host as well. Well, yeah, I mean I, I can host uh, I can host events I, I did the uh, the political podcast. So I was part of hosting that right. I mean, I'd say it would go pretty well uh, in general oh, 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 there it is Mount God here we go Go kill him dude. Yeah, I'm gonna get them out. Do you do you collect mounts or do people in method not care about that kind of stuff? <laughs> no, not me. There are some people that care, actually. I'm actually, I'm, I'm surprised. Uh, it seems like if you're, if you're like, I remember whenever I was like more serious about like raiding and everything, like never like method level, but I was just like, you know, raiding occasionally, right? Or like more often. Uh, I never gave a shit about mounts, but as soon as I stopped doing that regularly, I was like, man, I want to collect all these mounts, dude. Like, I've been like so excited about this shit. I haven't gotten a single one, dude. It's annoying. Yeah, I mean, no, we're just waiting on Sko to get in here. Uh... McConnell, were you able to talk to him? Boys, this is a momentous occasion right here. All right, don't hype it up too much, man. How's it going? <laughs> What's going on, guys? <laughs> yeah, a lot, I guess. I can see that. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a big night. So, um, basically, all right, all right. Well, I I asked uh, I asked Scrap about this. Why the fuck did you guys go with Red Bull if they weren't going to pay you for the old year event? Like, because I'm assuming that, like, it was in a contract for them not to pay you, right? Uh, it's, to be honest, it's a really long story. Um, and a lot of it we can't really talk about publicly. Okay. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to mention why. That could also be an issue. Okay. So there's a lot that we can't really say. Um, to be honest, like, that statement that you read on, on Twitter... I'm not even going to lie to you. We probably have to rewrite that thing like 20 plus times uh, before <laughs> well, posting good. it. I mean, it's, it's a big there was deal. Some stuff, yeah, there's some stuff in there that had to be scrubbed or had to be rewarded. Yeah, um, yeah it's been a bit of a... It's, it's been a very stressful uh, past month, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it feels, it feels good to finally get it out there. 
Well, we're, we're at tell what us, point? Tell us the story at of least, because obviously, you know, the uh, the main question we're getting in our streams these days is, or oh, are you guys going to Red Bull again to do the next race to World First and, and whatnot? Yeah. Um, which is obviously not the case. Well, um, well, where? What was the first time that you guys felt like you know the partnership might not be something that you'd want to continue? Well, the it started with obviously the Uldio event, right? This is uh -huh. back in September of last year. Um, and basically I reached out to Red Bull at that point, um, Red Bull UK that is, and basically asked them to come on and support the event and also provide us with the venue for the Race to World First event because we obviously wanted to do this in a, in a live venue right? Uh, to make it a bit more special. Plus, we also wanted to, you know, hype up the event, make an event and actually provide the guild with some extra compensation because we needed to obviously, this is the first time we've ever streamed progress as a raiding guild after being a raiding guild for 14 years. We wanted to go a little bit of an extra mile in regards to uh, compensating the guild for streaming the progress in the first place, right? Well, uh, how, how are so you by doing So by creating, so how basically they... by, crea okay, by creating a large event around the race world first, uh, it was obviously easier for us to bring on, let's say, external partners. Like we brought on a few partners for that event, uh, like Discord, for example. Um, that did provide monetary compensation, of course, for coming on as a partner. Oh, okay, so you had other sponsors on top of that. Yes. Okay, but, that, that's what um, I was trying to get to. Okay. Yes, there was no there was no contract with uh, <laughs> with Red Bull, though. So it wasn't like exclusive because that's like that was the main thing that I was concerned about. Is like, how are you going to be able to compromise or sorry, uh, you know, compensate people whenever you're not actually giving them money, right? Or because Red Bull wasn't paying them. So you had other sponsors on top of that. Yes, and that's how they were able to make money. The obviously the first event that we did was um, for the numbers. It was severely undersold. Yeah, like uh, we obviously did not expect the first event to achieve anywhere close to the numbers that it did. I, don't I think, think I can remember, did. for example, I think I can remember, for example, quoting Discord some numbers for the event that we suspected it might get, and then in the end, like actually collecting the stats and everything afterwards. The event actually did 10 times the, the the predicted numbers that we were wow. expecting so you can imagine that these sponsorships we had for the Uldio mm -hmm. event were not very significant um and we always thought that we could ramp them up quite significantly for the second event which was of course bod um because like i said the numbers really are impressive like we're talking for the Uldio event two times the, the viewership hours of the entire Overwatch League playoffs in 2018. That you know, like yeah, it was finals, a lot. Semifinals. Why didn't you guys so, do the uh, Crucible of Storms though? Like, because w was like, that because of the <laughs> uh, the deteriorating partnership with uh, Red Bull, or was there another reason for that too? Ah, uh, you talk. You want to talk about uh, the Crucible of Storms? Yeah, Crucible because Storms, Josh was the only okay. one that streamed, and like even you didn't stream. Uh, that's time. that's not true. I was I was streaming for the first seven or eight days of Crucible of Storms. The, the yeah. problem with Crucible of Storms is that it is a two boss raid, right? Um, so we, as a guild, actually expected this two boss raid to be finished within the space of one to two days, maybe three mm -hmm. max. Our, our benchmark for that is obviously prior raids, like, uh, like for example, Helia. Yeah, two of um, She was, she was actually defeated by Friday. Um, so we never expected this two boss raid to last very long. Um, and to be honest, the... The general hype around this raid was not significant, that both in a, on a community perspective, but also internally in the guild, people were not motivated for this raid at all. Um, the, the general attitude in the raid, wa raid was that they just wanted to kind of get it over with as fast as possible. I mean, I'm sure Skype, who's still on this call, can kind of echo that sentiment, but it was not really taken as a super serious raid for us. And we did it, indeed expect it to last so, so short. Was that, that just like was, fatigue, basically? It, that was very bad to put an event because now I'm going to, let me just talk about the events for okay. a second, because this is actually important. This is, this provides some context here. So obviously a big issue with the Race to World First events is that you don't know how long these events are going to last, right? You don't know how long they're going to go on for. Yeah. Now, generally, when it comes to a major raid tier like BOD or Uldi or, for example, the Eternal Palace that's coming up, we have a rough idea that this event probably is going to last at least, let's say, eight days. Because if the event's tuned properly, generally what happens is you get to the last boss, then you get that extra clear for the of the reset for the extra gear, and then you're finally able to you know overcome that last hurdle that is the last boss. Normally by that time as well, Blizzard may have made some tuning Well, that's mistakes. what happened with Cahoon and um, also with Jaina, right? Exactly, Both yeah, ones. exactly. Yeah. So so I could tell you right now that we're expecting, you know, the Eternal Palace to probably last, let's say, eight to nine days max, right? However, when it comes to the two boss raids, 
we, like I said, we really expected this to be something that was going to be a thing of a couple of days or so. And because it was so difficult to predict, going back to the events again, to put on an event this on the scale of, let's say, the BOD event or the event we're doing for the Eternal Palace, this is this is no these these events are not cheap. The upfront cost of flying everyone out to location, the the travel cost, the hotels, the the production team, everything like that. You're probably talking about normal upfront costs for like one of these events to be 25k. Right. You're then talking about each day of the event to be minimum 10k. And Were so the you guys problem able to make the is, money back from BOD. Did no, you guys problem, come out positive? No. So let's if you, if you want to jump back to BOD again. Really? Um, basically, in the in the statement uh, that I wrote, the biggest problem we had with BOD was we had the numbers from Uldia, so we had a tested case study. However, the biggest issue with BOD is we never actually knew what the final product was for the event until two weeks before the Mythic release. So this was one week before Heroic. Now, you, I mean, you guys, you, you can obviously imagine how that is trying to make sales against a product or an event that you have no idea um, what it actually is you're selling, right? Like well, we, we yeah, can't, and, we can't uh, being on, on Red Bull's form. channel, I think is the weirdest thing, right? And so that was like a really big point of contention with Red Bull is they really wanted to have the event on their channel. Am I, am yeah, I right and that's that? and that's the reason. This is the the Red Bull Red Bull going on their channel was the main reason why this event was so delayed in getting finalized because yeah. after Uldia, as I wrote again in the statement, it became a discussion with Red Bull that they basically wanted to move the event onto their channel, taking it off the Meta channel, of course. And that was obviously like I, I wrote the reasons, some of the reasons in my statement is why we can do that. There's some other stuff as well, but like I said, that I can only say so much. Um, but basically, um, yeah, that was the main, that was the main, that was the main point of contention. They worked on their channel. We obviously had very good reasons for not wanting that to happen. Um, and that's what caused the delay in terms of finalizing what the product was for BOD. And I can tell you that that Christmas and that New Year period of going back and forth uh, in terms of you know trying to trying to finalize the BOD event, BOD event with Red Bull was extremely stressful. Like it kept feeling as if we were uh, achieving ground, then all of a sudden we weren't achieving ground. Like there was there was like hope every now and then in terms of the way the conversation was developing. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of found ourselves in a really difficult situation where we'd invested so much time, energy um, into trying to work this solution out with Red Bull because, you know, we really did want to work with Red Bull. We held Red Bull in, you know, as a brand, it's like a brand that you aspire to work with. You know, it's a brand that most of you guys probably hold in very high esteem. It's like a brand you want to be associated with, right? So we, that, maybe that was 100%, by the way, I, I think that's definitely maybe some naivety on my part as well. Uh, Cause I, we have Sasha on this call as well. Uh, Sasha is uh, one of the other guys in Method, and he at that point actually was telling me that no, we need to we need to move away at this point. We need to do something else, and it was kind of my fault, I think, in that regard. Where I was like, nah, I'm sure we can work something out with Red Bull because there was always this premise the whole way along that there was going to be this partnership with Red Bull, like a Method Red Bull partnership that was going to you know lead to like the long term future of these events and you know growing out the race world first in the in the way that we imagined. What what However, how did you imagine it? Well, exactly like as I kind of wrote in my statement, the mm -hmm. plan was to to eventually grow the race to world. We, to, we actually wanted to do this for BOD already to include other guilds and grow out the race to world first into a bigger concept. The problem is, is that we had no time again. Um, like you can't, we can't do anything with only knowing, you know, two weeks before the event again, that this is, that's the situation. Like we definitely should have cut weight, cut ties after the Uldia event, shortly after the Uldia event and shortly after realizing what Red Bull was really wanting to do internally. However, we kept obviously believing in the hope that there was another way around this this uh, this problem, and we kind of just left it too late. That there was no other option for us to either probably either do the event online, or take an absolute massive financial hit, or do the event obviously, uh, or just try and keep hoping that we were going to do the event with Red Bull. Did they pay you uh, guys for BOD? Uh, no, there was there's no there was no monetary compensation provided to Method for BOD. Um, was the there any the, other compensation that individual members that were there at the studio got? Uh, no. The, the the deal. The, actually, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can talk. If I can talk about the deal. Can I talk about the deal, Sasha, on this one or not? 
Well, there was no contract in place. Um, so I think it's fine if we, we have to be a little bit careful here what we say legally, like Scott said. But um, obviously, Red Bull sponsored the event, meaning they helped with the cost for the event, right? Right. Um, what we're saying is they didn't directly compensate the players. <laughs> Wait one second, by the way. I actually see people in chat typing. <laughs> well, that's that's uh, that's the lawyer. Yeah. That's, that's actually oh, my... not, that's actually... Yeah, Go ahead, Sasha. No, I'm actually not the lawyer. I'm just um, one of the. Um, so Scott and I we used to raid together, and I helped um, building up Method as an organization. So I'm I'm just, um, you could say, co-owner of the organization Method. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is that you probably won't say anything wrong. Well, um, it's, that's the thing, because that's why that's why I'm saying we have to be at the yeah, yeah, so many I times understand. and whatnot. Because, I mean, let's just put it this way. I mean, even on on this because obviously Red Bull is such a big company. If you on the smallest thing, they can obviously yeah. Yeah, I mean they have a huge amount of legal power, might, so to speak. Yeah, so course. that's why I was a little bit skeptical, even if I should call on this call in the first place. But I do feel as if I was, when I was listening to you tell the audience what your thoughts were on the statement, I did kind of feel like it, I didn't really agree with what a lot okay. of what you're saying. Yeah, I, I do want to. I do want to get say, to that. Go ahead. I will say that the main disagreement I have with you is that, um, just to be clear, we have no problem with third-party cor uh, corporate sponsors coming in. The only thing that we're rejecting in this whole in this whole statement is that the third-party corporate entity the owns ownership. the entire competition. Yeah, we're in agree. I, I agree with you entirely there. Yeah, I want to give you an example which might clarify the situation a little bit. Um, imagine something else. Imagine the NFL, right? We all know the NFL. Okay. Imagine it was called not the NFL, what's called Red Bulls football, right? Red Bull would own this entire comp uh, competition. Let's just imagine, first of all, what that means to the NFL. Um, you could have basically for every 10 minutes of play, you could have an hour of Red Bull ads, right? I mean, they have full control of it. They can do whatever they want. Another problem is in terms of uh, the money that it makes, the way that players and teams are compensated. Imagine the, the NFL, for example, would make 10 billion a year, right? And right now, let's say in the NFL, let's say 8 billion of that goes to the teams and players. Now, Red Bull owns the event all of a sudden. They would say, well, why would 8 billion go to the teams of players and just 2 billion to us? Why don't we change it up a little bit and 9 billion goes to Red Bull and only 1 billion goes to the players and teams, right? They think that's fair. The point that we're trying to make is this is the a reality that we're possibly looking at here with the Race to World first. If Red Bull owns the entire event, they can do whatever they want with it. They can compensate anyone or not compensate anyone in whatever manner they want. That is what we're trying to prevent because the reality is that we have in video games is there is one owner of the game, which is Blizzard. If Red Bull assumes ownership over the race to world first, Blizzard could technically enable them and say, yeah, that's all fine. And then we are at all at the mercy of Red Bull entirely. That's, we, that's what, my main concern. And I think that was probably my strongest argument for what you guys were saying is, and, and that's purely an argument of self-preservation. So we obviously did this like classic dueling tournament a couple of days ago. And the idea that we wouldn't be able to distribute tournaments and do community run tournaments if Red Bull was basically the de facto, uh, not even de facto, like the established people that are, you know, doing these tournaments, that that's obviously very bad for us. Everybody should be able to do communities or sorry, do tournaments in a community and not just have it all based around one company. I mean, I, I think almost everyone would agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's our main concern. We, we are absolutely open to Red Bull doing as much as they want the race. Well, first as a sponsor, yeah. as a supporter of the race, but we reject the idea, like Scott said, that Red Bull has an ownership in this race. There, there's no reason why they should. Well, it, I, I, I personally believe, like, you know, as somebody who streams on Twitch, right? I think that it's a bad decision, right? It's, it's misguided uh, marketing for them to focus so much on trying to develop their own channel because all of their views and everything are organic. So they're not going to stick at all. It's like hosting somebody and like thinking that those people are all going to watch the next day. Uh, it's a very bad idea. And there's plenty of other cases of it not working as well. And you see it every single day. So if somebody thinks that's actually going to work at Red Bull, I think they really should sit down and start talking to people that are, you know, creators on Twitch and streamers and see like what they say, because it does seem like it's very, very misguided. Uh, that being said, I do have a question. Do you think that if Red Bull did not insist on it being on their channel, would you still be in partnership? 
Possible, yes. Um, I think we would need it to clarify with Red Bull that they are a sponsor, they are a supporter of this event, mm -hmm. um, but not the owner. I think that needs to be clarified. The ownership, again, um, what we uh, propose is that there should be only two owners, and that is Blizzard and the guilds that compete in it, right? Because we are the only ones really who um, have any kind of intrinsic value to this competition, right? Yes. What exact what exact connection does Red Bull have with, with World of Warcraft or Race the World first? There is no real connection, right? So as a for-profit company, what, what would Red Bull's uh, interest be? Well, it is making money, money. right? Yeah. Well, you well, can Method also say the same thing. Company too. Ab absolutely, yeah. we are a for-profit company, but the difference is we actually participate, right? We compete in this com uh, competition, so we do have another interest besides making money. Um, and we've also, just to clarify, we've done so for 14 years. So it's not like Method has been a for-profit company. We've only been an organization, actually, a legal entity for the last four years. So we have 10 years of history of us competing in the race the world first at no no uh making no compensation making no money at all just out of passion and pretty much dedication to the game yeah i think that's probably one of your best selling points is that obviously you've been doing this for a long time and your interest in this predates the profit from it and so obviously there is a certain level of as you said intrinsic interest in it and uh, i think that really my main concern right is that uh, whenever you're talking about this idea of the commissioner and everything like that, uh, I think that it kind of, it felt like the last paragraph was basically a resume to rationalize yourselves being the commissioners or the governing body around the race to world first. And I'm not even really saying that that's undeserved because obviously you've put the most work into it, you put the most time into it, etc. But whenever you have something like that, my concern is that how how are people going to make sure that you don't basically do what Red Bull did. Yes, to clarify, the commissioner part is perhaps that was poor wording on our part. We'll the, commissioner it, yeah. is, the commissioner is supposed to be neutral, as in it's not supposed to be, the commissioner is not supposed to be a method. Uh -huh. um, imagine this as like a neutral party. It could be even you, right? Let's say the the guilds elect Asmongold to be the commissioner. God help this you guys. This is not guys. supposed to be yeah this is not supposed to be um a commissioner that's that's employed or that's even method mm -hmm. um of course there might need to be like a like a temporary solution like method has always done this race two times perhaps for the next one method would need to do quite a lot of the heavy lifting but long term we're talking about the next years 10 years whatever yeah this is supposed to be a neutral party so the commissioner is supposed to be a neutral person not directly affiliated with any of the guilds Okay. Um, I mean, I think that my main concern is like, how how are these, uh, the, the money, how's the money going to be distributed? And I, I think that you guys probably don't even have the answers to that yet because it's all very, uh, it's all hypothetical, basically. And so I, I understand that you probably don't have the answers to all of that. But in general, I, I could see a lot of concern being like, how are actually people going to be compensated on a real level, right? Not just like kind of hypotheticals, but, you know, what are people really going to get out of the event? what what could this actually bring to the community yeah what's quite important here is to look at the uh, viewership of the race the world first right um again we made comparisons to the overwatch league playoffs or to a csco major even um the the event is very big and if you have an event of that scale there is a lot of uh, possibility to um, create sponsorship revenue um so what we think it is very possible that similar to other esports titles that a lot of the players could do this for a full-time living if if we uh, have our construct um like i said and like uh, scott said in the statement as well um you know you have league of legends players there's probably i, I made a tweet about this reason there's probably over foul, a thousand league of legends players who play league of legends for a living so they make their living entirely from playing league of legends uh, professionally mm -hmm. So if you see that number of o over a thousand players who are able to make a living from a game, you know, it's not such a fast stretch that maybe, let's say, a hundred World of Warcraft players in the Race the World First could make a living. And a hundred players, that would equate to about five guilds. Yeah, um, and what, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of skeptical about that because, I mean, with, with League of Legends, you're distributing a sponsorship and you're, you're, you're I guess, like, 
spreading it out over like maybe I think like five or six or seven people. But in WoW, I mean, if you have a whole rating team, you've got 20 people. You've got to spread that sponsorship money across. Like, uh, does every single person in Method even do all? I mean, like you, you've even said that like many of them have jobs now, which implies that obviously they're not full time players to begin with. So I, I don't really think that you're ever going to get to a point where you can take a sponsorship and this is also independent of streaming. I think the only way that somebody can, you know, for sure be okay with like being a, uh, you know, a professional WoW player exclusively is if they also stream because I just can't really see the amount of sponsorship money somebody could get through this event because also the thing with the race to world first is that it's very inconsistent. It's not like this is something that happens Monday through Friday. It happens, well, you know, on, once on that ahead. topic again, Go. just, just. Just let me know how much do you think uh, the race to world first is worth in terms of sponsorships? Uh, like from your, that's from your, a good question. Uh, let's see. You said ten million viewer hours. Uh, Correct, was yeah. that the number? Uh, shit. I'd say a million. I'd say more than a be, million. I think you'd be very surprised as to how much yeah. uh, sponsorship revenue should uh, be coming in for these events if the event is properly planned and sales are properly made against the events. Think about this. A revenue I mean, split with the guilds which should be pretty substantial, actually, in reality. Mm -hmm. Esports is sometimes a little bit underestimated. Think about it. Think about on the scale of a small uh, sport, right? Let's say football in a small country, let's say in Poland, right? I can tell you there's still probably 18 teams or so in Poland that have uh, full-time professional players, all of them, right? And the football team generally also has about uh, like 20 players or so with substitutes. Right. So if you think a small sport in a small country can have so many players do a full-time living out of their profession. If you then look at the Race to World First, six million unique uh, devices tuned into the Race to World World First. That's probably a lot more than most sports league get in terms of viewership in on a small country. Way more effect. Um, so if it's possible for them to have hundreds of players in in the sport, small sports league to do this full time. I, 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 you would be surprised how easy it would actually be for, let's say, at least three, four, maybe five guilds to make a full-time living out of the race to world first in a fairly short time span. Well, let, let's let's get one thing out of the way too: is that the reason why obviously the world first race was doing so well, the reason why your numbers were so high was because of method. Uh, if you have another guild, I don't want to go ahead and name any specific guild, but let's just say you have another guild come in and they don't have the same uh, name recognition as method, they're going to be uh, bringing in a draw that's maybe 5% of what method is going to bring in. And we were actually just looking before this, we were looking at the numbers that you know other guilds had brought in for COS and then also for uh, Battle of Dazar Lore, and both of them were substantially lower than method. So I think really the concern would be if those other guilds would really see any sort of meaningful compensation and also, how would you be able to determine the value that they add to the organization and to the event? Because obviously it's not going to be a one-to-one -one ratio with the amount of value that Method adds. Yeah, so, I mean, I can I can tell you that one idea we were floating around, um, this is like, we're still in the very early stages of just of that trying, kind of trying to develop how this concept would look like. Mm -hmm. But one idea we were floating around was that be, there would be one 24-hour stream so basically, there would be one venue, let's say in NA, one venue in Europe. Those two feeds would go into one feed, and there would be a twenty-four-seven stream. And this stream would, you know, have all the talent on it. If it, it would have like the, all the guilds on it, and this same twenty-four-hour feed would be broadcast across all the guilds Twitch channels. So like Twitch.tv/limit, Twitch.tv/exorcist, Twitch.tv/method, and then obviously the fans can choose which stream they want to tune into and support. How did you do sponsorship money though? Like, is that the event? The the event basically the guilds or the uh, or the or the other parties involved in this could bring in sales against the event, and the revenue. Would be so split. the sales would be the individually split. based. It, it wouldn't be like uh, no, like no, group no, negotiations. The sales, no, no, the sales would be for the entire event. So, for okay. example, let's just say, like hypothetically, let's just say Limit came to the table and said, "Okay, you guys, we've got this. Uh, I don't know, peripheral, peripheral partner." Yeah. that wants to spot the event uh everyone agrees to it the proof partner comes on board that money then goes into a collective pot and that is then going to get split between the guilds after the event itself right so the revenue share right so uh, the event will be okay. sold sold against separately so every every guild and every team would have their own team sponsors 
but the the actual event itself would be a, a separate a separate entity so to speak um that sales would be made against and the revenue would be split between the guilds yeah to put this to make this simple as well as i mean i absolutely agree like method would probably bring more to the table initially as in terms of size right but you yeah. have the same issue in every league i mean even let's say the lcs i mean everyone knows tsm right and tsm is probably one of the biggest contributors to uh league and the lcs but there's also teams like FlyQuest, you know, um, who knows FlyQuest really, um, not to shit on them, but it's not a brand as big as TSM, obviously. Yeah. Um, so we're pretty sure that everyone will be fairly compensated once we pool the money and we find a fair solution of how it's distributed. The idea would obviously be that the top contenders would all be doing this on a professional basis so they can all afford to, to play at the same level as the other guilds. And that is, you have to see it as well from our perspective with Method, that's very much in our interest too. We want to have strong competitors. Our achievement of getting a world first is meaningless if we have no one who competes on the same level as us. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely meaningless. Yeah, w winning a one horse race. Yeah, so it's absolutely in our interest that our competitors are playing on the same level as us. Otherwise, the, the whole, the whole uh, race, the whole competition just would become meaningless and therefore our motivation to win would be non-existent, it, which is, to be fair, that's that's one of the big reasons in the first place why Method decided to stream in Uldia. Yeah, um, that was the that was definitely the situation we were facing in Uldia. The community in general was very skeptical about the future of hardcore raiding. I don't I don't know if you remember back at that time, Asm Gold, um, but generally raiding was not in a good place. You know, people were not raid, really raiding anymore because it was no longer the place where you got the best gear. Everyone was focusing on like you know Mythic Plus. Uh, PUP, all that kind of stuff. The rating scene was in a pretty dire place. There was barely any competition. Um, and, I, and by actually streaming the World First Race, it's, it's brought a lot of excitement and everything back to the rating scene. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that's definitely true. I mean, that's one of the main concerns that I really have is that what is longevity of the hardcore rating scene? And, you know, one of the positives with having a company like Red Bull be involved is that obviously they have a lot of money and organizational skills to, you know, make sure that these things keep going on. But I also kind of worry that, you know, do you, how do you think that Blizzard is going to respond to this whole, uh, uh, this whole thing happening, right? Just like the entire event uh, with like Red Bull and then these guys. And also, actually, you know what? I have a question before I even want to get into that. How did you guys find out uh, about the other uh, guilds being involved uh, with Red Bull? I know all. <laughs> well, it's it's a very small community, right? The hardcore rain community. So um, keeping something secret is, is not very easy, especially if like 25 people know. Did Skype just whisper oh. something there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, said, I said I know all. <laughs> Woke up school at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, it's and um, it's always been the case in the rating community on uh, Asmund Gold that things. It's just I mean, information with, with is team, being shared with, with teams with being obviously like 25 to 30 players. There's unfortunately always uh, a leak somewhere. There's a I guess, rat. Yeah. yeah, I know. I get it. Uh, trust me, it, it's the same with everything. Even if you have like a dozen people, some somehow the information is going to get out. Uh, so have you guys already approached Method or uh, Limit or any of them on uh, on this event? Like, have you already talked to them privately? To, yep. to Limit to limit in Pieces? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we, we obviously found out that Red Bull had reached out to them behind our back. And yeah, we, we wanted to talk to, to Limit in Pieces. And mainly, the problem, well, part of the problem here is that it we didn't really have too much time before this event was coming up. Mm -hmm. Like it felt as if Red Bull had already done quite a good job in convincing Limit and Pieces that this was the correct move for them before we really got a chance to speak to them. Um, there was also also we weren't quite prepared in terms of the concept, like how we could actually execute, let's say, a concept that would benefit a lot of different guilds quick enough for 8.2 that would be very difficult to implement so we're looking more towards the future i guess uh, in terms of like 8.3 onwards but we did obviously try and explain the situation to limit pieces how hand how you know being part of handing off the race world first to a third party corporation is not probably the right long-term play although it might be and, you and could, how did you they could argue obviously that? in their case that it might be more beneficial short term yeah um you know, we did try to offer certain options and alternatives. And I can tell you that, again, from my inside information, uh, that 
uh, Red Bull had to increase their offer to limit in pieces, I guess, after they had those conversations with us. Um, so it's kind of, unfortunately, it's kind of gone into that situation where um, you have Red Bull on one side now who's approaching a lot of the, let's say, guild or talent that we've used in guilds of talent that we've used in the previous event and, you know, having to offer uh, heightened levels of compensation or, you know, uh, certain angles to try and obviously get them to be involved in, in the Red Bulls world first. Yeah, I, I understand.